Hi, I'm so glad you joined me for this little nugget of chemistry. What we're going to look at today is how we link these two little kind of maps that I have developed in previous videos. So we're going to look at how we move to atoms within a formula unit or molecule. We can do this at the atom atom level or we can do it at the mole mole level. Um, and I want to show you how to do that in both of these. So we're going to be linking these in this video. So let's take a look at a couple of problems. In this one, it says how many carbon atoms are present in 15 grams of glucose. So we have a molecule and we have the mass of the molecule and we want to get to atoms within that molecule. And so that's going to take us a few steps. And we can go mass to moles, moles to molecules, molecules to atoms, or we can go mass to moles, moles to moles, moles to atoms. So let me show you those two setups. All right, we have 15.0 grams of glucose, C6, H12O6. I'm going to do this one first. And that means our first step is to get to the heart of chemistry. And we want to get to the mole first. So we want to get rid of grams and go to moles. Mass to moles, use molar mass. If you calculated the molar mass of glucose, you'd get 180.18 grams. So I've made it this far on my journey. Now, grams cancel. I want to get rid of moles and I want to go to molecules. This is something that hopefully you've done before. One mole, the molecule is what you can count. So that's where you put Avogadro's number is by the particle that you can count. What I'm adding in this video is this last step. So if we have C6H12O6, I need to get rid of molecules and go to carbon atoms. And the number that gives me that is this subscript. That subscript tells me there are six carbon atoms in every one molecule. And so our answer would be 3.01 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of carbon, okay? Now, there is a second pathway we can take. We can go mass to moles, moles to moles, and moles to atoms. You can use whichever you like best, uh, unless your teacher has a preference. So we're going to start again with the 15.0 grams of glucose. All right, and it's you know the same number of steps. You don't change the number of steps here. The reason I wanna show you both ways is so that you can see that that ratio here is not only an atom molecule ratio, but it's also a mole to mole ratio. So I wanna get rid of grams and go to moles. One mole is 180.18 grams. Now this time, I'm going to eliminate moles of glucose, which is what I have here is moles of glucose. You really ought to be labeling those 15 grams of glucose. And I want to go to moles of carbon. Well, that subscript can be used on the mole level as well. And so for every one mole of glucose, I have six moles of carbon, okay? So it works on the molecule atom level and that subscript works on the mole to mole. So whenever you're going to atoms within, you're going to be using your subscripts. OK, 
okay, now I want to get rid of moles of carbon and I want to go to atoms of carbon and atom is something we can count. So that's where we'll use the 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd to one. And you would get that same 3.01 times 10 to the 23rd. Okay, and let's take a look at another example. This time I have atoms of aluminum and I want to go to grams of aluminum sulfite. So this is atoms within. So the formula for aluminum sulfite, oh, I hope you know those polyatomic ions, is Al2SO3-3. I have aluminum and I'm trying to find out how many grams of the whole substance I have. So 2.55 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of aluminum. Uh, I'm going to go to formula units and I'll do it one way in one of these problems and the other way in the next problem. So get my grid. I've got three steps here. You start to see why I use dimensional analysis. If you were using proportionalities, this would take a while. Atoms to Fu, for every one formula unit, for every one formula unit, we have two aluminums represented. represented. Okay, so now I'm in the formula unit world. I want to get rid of formula units and go to moles. A formula unit is what you count, so that's what you, where you will put Avogadro's number. So formula units cancel, atoms of aluminum cancel. Now I can get to mass. So I want to get rid of moles of aluminum sulfite and get to mass. Mass to moles use molar mass. The molar mass of aluminum sulfite is 294.17. You might want to verify that number just to make sure, A, that I did my math right, but B, more importantly, that you know how to calculate these. And if I didn't have a finger slip on my calculator, I've got 62.3 grams of aluminum sulfite. Okay, this time <clears throat> we're going from grams to atoms within. And so I'm going to start with 35.8 grams of ammonium nitride. That means it's the N negative three ion. I did this just to make it a little trickier when you were counting those atoms within. I wanted to make sure you paid attention to all of the subscripts there. Okay, so mass to moles, use molar mass, and the molar mass of ammonium nitride is 68.16 grams. And I'm still talking about ammonium nitride here. Now I'm going to use those subscripts on a mole-to-mole -mole basis, just to show you that you can do it at either one of those levels. Uh, moles of nitrogen per mole of ammonium nitride. Well, there are three nitrogens contributed from the ammonium and then the nitrogen from the nitride, so there are four moles of nitrogen for every one mole of ammonium nitride. Now I can get into my count of atoms. So atoms of nitrogen, that's what we can count, so that's where we'll put Avogadro's number to one mole. And when I did my math, I got 1.24. Don't forget that magnitude, atoms, of nitrogen. Okay, thanks for joining me. Appreciate your time.